Probably all of you have heard one day about heart attack. But what's exactly going on? Like all organs, heart needs oxygen. And when the blood channels supplying heart muscles get clogged with fatty deposits and the blood clot, the blood flow to the heart is cut off. Heart muscles starts to die within a minute. In the worst case scenario, heart attack may cause a sudden death. Right after heart attack, patients should be taken immediately to the hospital, where cardiologists reopen the blocked blood channel, remove the blood clot using a thin tube called the catheter, and they insert what's called a middle stent, as shown in the picture on the top right. It sounds great, but we still have a big problem. The process of intervention itself and the implanted stent sometimes trigger platelets. Platelets are circulating cells that when they aggregate, they form the blood clot. Activated platelets send the chemical signals to white blood cells to secrete more chemical substances that may induce a chaotic state of inflammation and activated platelets, in which patients are at a very high risk of developing a blood clot inside the stent, which may end up having another heart attack. Unfortunately, up to four out of each 10 patients having a blood clot inside the stent may die. But here's the good news. We tried to manage this problem in our research project. If we treated patients with heart attack with a really novel antiplatelet medication that can kick in within minutes and inhibit platelets and prevent them from being aggregated, would it help? In our study, we divided patients with heart attack into two groups. The first one got this new medication that's called Kangalore. The second group got standard medications. And then we monitored the platelet activity and, of, of, and white blood cells in both groups. Platelets reacted in an astonishing way, and they were inhibited as early as 10 minutes with this new drug. White blood cells and inflammation were dramatically decreased with this new medication. Based on our findings, the use of this medication may significantly reduce mortality in patients with heart attack. Thank you, everybody. Hello, my name is Michelle, and I just recently joined a lab in pharmaceutical sciences where one of the things that we study is cardiovascular immunology, or in other words, how is your immune system interacting with your heart and your blood vessels during the development of cardiovascular disease? When I say cardiovascular disease in this case, I specifically mean the buildup of plaque and cholesterol in your arteries, a condition which will ultimately often lead to a heart attack. Now you might say to me, Michelle, I'm pretty sure that that is a direct result of eating too many cheeseburgers. And I would say to you, not entirely true. Science is increasingly coming to understand that your immune system can actually play a pretty significant role in the development of cardiovascular disease. So what do we know? One of the things that we know is that lots of people who are undergoing treatment for cardiovascular disease will have circulating in their blood antibodies that are directed against one of the proteins that helps to remove cholesterol from the bloodstream. Now normally antibodies are a good thing, something you want around fighting disease and fighting infection. But in this case, these are autoantibodies. They're directed against a self protein that's called autoimmunity and that's never a good thing. So while we don't know exactly what these antibodies are doing, we suspect that they may have a couple of different consequences. Number one, they may be altering normal cholesterol trafficking, causing higher than usual levels of cholesterol to be left circulating in your bloodstream. Number two, these antibodies are very pro-inflammatory. So we think that they may be creating a more inflammatory environment in your vasculature. So what are we doing? Well, one of the things that we would like to do is to use a unique vaccination strategy to change the type of antibody that's being produced from a pro-inflammatory to a more anti-inflammatory type. We think that when we do this, we can alter that inflammatory environment that's happening in the vasculature and therefore change the progression of cardiovascular disease in existing patients. Thank you. Hi, there is a huge power in young people. 
every day they partner with their peers and teachers to realize their leadership potential. Just last year, such organization as the National 4-H Council has served approximately 6 million youth aged 13 through 19 in their STEM, health, agriculture, and leadership development programs. Undoubtedly, there is a great benefit of these leadership opportunities. However, the environment we create for youth to grow as leaders, unfortunately, has nothing to do with their views on leadership or their needs in leadership interventions. It's like giving someone a ride without actually asking them where they want to go and how to get there. Yet research has shown us the importance of designing leadership education, not for, but with students. In my postdoctoral research, I aim to elevate the voices of high school students in their leadership development in practice. Well, how have I done this? Through hundreds of hours of interviews and observations, I have engaged youth from rural communities in Kentucky. Importantly, I found that young people see the ability to be a leader in everyone. Being a leader is merely a personal choice. It's a choice that impacts youth themselves, their families, school, and community. Well, you might ask, what's the impact? Number one. Leadership is crucial in making rural youth independent in helping others, advancing their careers and accomplishing personal goals. Number two, it also helps them dedicate themselves to the common good of their families, put their family's interests before their own, and more importantly, serve and care for others. And number three, young leaders are able to make a positive change in their schools and community. My research focused on including youth in the development of youth leadership programs is important as it shows young people that their voices do matter. It also adds to a growing body of research that demonstrates how rural youth can positively influence every aspect of their lives. Well, in my postdoctoral study, I'm examining how to empower youth to be the leaders they can be the best uh, by building upon what they already know and what they actually do on a daily basis to improve their character, their families, and community. Thank you.